Fleming. Just the man I was looking for. Silver, to what do I owe the honor of your presence? <laughs> you always were a funny dude. The man everyone likes. But I caught on to your game a long time ago. I just wanted to get some clarification. This whole time you've been the hand of the king, telling everyone that you've been given the consortium its directives and fate's place. He was never really there, was he? You've just been helping him hold the throne hostage so that someone like me can't take it. I'm not going to give that information to you, Elijah. The king's affairs are on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> king's affairs? Listen to you sounding all official. The fact that you aren't telling actually is telling me exactly what I needed to know. You could have taken a throne this whole time for yourself, and you didn't. I don't know if that's loyalty or stupidity. It's whatever you want to think it is, Silver. The way things are now, though, is a hell of a lot better than what they could be if someone like you was running the show. So what you gonna do when I am running the show, little man? Would you be that loyal if I was the king? To be honest, I'd excommunicate my whole damn company if you were the king. Loyalty. To a fault. But I respect it. <laughs> I guess I'll be waiting on your letter of resignation when this is all over. It is now time for the final stage of the group phase of the Trial of Kings Tournament. Please welcome the first competitors of Group D. Introducing first, fighting out of Tehran, Iran. This man is a freestyle fighter, standing 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing in at 240 pounds. Representing the Xerxes Corporation. Presenting the immortal Rahim Abbas. And his opponent, fighting out of New York, New York, USA. This man is also a freestyle fighter, standing 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing in at 265 pounds. Representing Silent Cloud, presenting the King of Power, Elijah Silver.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the first major turning point in this third trial of Kings tournament. 12 spots have already been filled in the round of 16, and the last four spots are up for grabs here in Group D, aka the Group of Death. And the reason why this particular bracket gets its nickname is because a majority of the competitors in it, Howard, come from, how we say, not so positive backgrounds, if you will. Yeah, we've seen a lot of guys in the previous groups that come from backgrounds in different martial arts and also different competitive sports, different combat sports. But these guys here, they don't come from anything competitive. They come from backgrounds where the name of the game is quite literally kill or be killed. There goes a beautiful reversal by the king of power, Elijah Silver. Try to uh, taunt Raheem Abbas. But Abbas up to the challenge here and applying pressure on this uh, shoulder lock here. The information I have on Raheem Abbas is a former member of the Iranian military who amongst several other martial arts disciplines is an avid practitioner of a discipline known as Varzesh Pavlani, which is an ancient Persian or modern Iranian grappling style that utilizes wrestling and submissions. I personally find it very interesting that you have so many different nations and civilizations throughout history that have all developed their own different specific styles of grappling arts in particular. Of course, Pavlani being one of them, Pancration, Panwani, so many different variations of grappling arts around the world. Yeah, but Elijah Silva is just a modern day bruiser. It's pretty easy to make that assumption on the surface. But Silver himself is also a very well-rounded combatant and has also mastered several different disciplines in the combat arts. He also shares the distinction alongside of Masato Kadanashi, who's already advanced into the round of 16 as the only two men to have competed in all three iterations of this tournament. In fact, winning the very first Trials Tournament for his then representative benefactor, Ignatius Blackheart, who some of the uh, older spectators in this arena should be more than familiar with. This time, of course, he fights for himself and we'll have to see if the third time is going to be the charm as Raheem Abbas calling out Silver and coming to blows here. Oh, scintillating kicks. Goading Silver on into a double kicking combination. Going for the three count fall, but no dice on the first attempt. Abbas now whips Silver, leapfrogs, ducks under, on a beautiful, stiff, single leg drop kick. That one landed flush on the jaw of Elijah Silver, and Abbas follows up with a dazzling springboard back elbow. This man has some tremendous quickness to go along with precision striking and expert submissions. He goes for another cover here though. And only picks up a count of maybe 2.1 at best. But the man who calls himself the Immortal, named after the ancient elite soldier guild of the Persian army, 
Persia, now known in modern era as Iran, leaps almost clear across the ring with a double axe handle. But just like that, Silva, the opportunist, makes a gamble on the opening and just wrenched Abbas across the throat onto that top rope. And now finds himself back into this match with a variation of a suplex. And now Silva driving Abbas face first into the point of his knee. Raheem Abbas now rolling out of the ring to try to regroup. And Elijah Silva reveling in the glory of battle here as he beats against the chest of Abbas. Beating his opponent like a drum right there. Abbas might be in trouble. After losing in the second tournament, Silver broke away from the Blackheart Foundation and using his ties both within Monarch and from his days as a street hustler, amassed a massive music empire that owns several labels. His net worth is in the billions. Despite being very much a king in his own right, the throne he sits on pales in comparison to the one he sought since that second tournament. In his own words, power is good and all, but fear is where it's at. And as you would expect, Silver following Abbas out of the ring to continue to push the pace and apply more offense. Kick to the gut. And now hoisting the Immortal up in a power bomb position. Headed to that turn post and wow. Amazing display of power by the King of Power. Looking of course for that upgrade to King of Fear. But he's got a long way to go before he reaches that distinction. Still plenty of match left here and plenty of tournament after that should he prevail. However, it looks pretty good for him right now. As for the past few minutes, he has been pouring it on against his opponent, Abbas. Another kick to the gut here. And Elijah Silver again going for the power bomb. This time with authority. It'd be smart right here for Silver to go for the cover. And that's exactly what he does here. Abbas gets the shoulder up though. Now he's listed at 240 pounds, which isn't small by any stretch of the imagination. But look at the physique on this guy Silver. You gotta imagine, he could probably bench press 240 pounds on a bad day. He has most certainly shown that he has the power advantage in this matchup. The same way that Abbas showed earlier that he has the speed advantage. And he shows it again. Wow. What just happened? If you blink, you miss it. Abbas with a springboard in Sagiri out of nowhere. Stinging like a scorpion. And he takes to the skies again for Diving Meteora. After serving in Iranian ground forces, Abbas became more interested in the fighting arts, wanting to build on his extensive combat training to hone himself into an elite warrior. Known to finish fights in brutal fashion, he's become quite feared in the underground. Despite an unfavorable tournament seating, Many within the circle have invested interest in his capabilities, believing that in time, he can become a true enforcer and an asset to whichever company he chooses to represent in the future. Introducing the point of his knees into Elijah Silver's face, follows up with another cover. 
unsuccessful in the pinfall, however. But again, with the knees, this time right in between Silver's shoulder blades. And Raheem Abbas is so quick. He is sudden and so agile that he can maneuver his way into any advantageous position in this match. Another knee, this time to the small of the back, targeting multiple areas. Focusing on one area is effective too, but there ain't nothing wrong with just beating a guy in every single part of their body. Looks to me like Abyss is just trying to wear Silver down. Knock some wind out of his sails. That'll knock the wind right out of you. Guillotine leg drop. Quickly transitions into a cover, but only manages a two count. And now Abyss, possibly planning his next attack here, can start to see the effects of this battle on both individuals. But Abbas again with another offensive onslaught with a combination that follows into a modified backbreaker. Very innovative technique by the Immortal who is now starting to uh, feel himself here. Another guillotine leg drop, this time of the springboard variety. And another knee, this time to the chest. That multi-faceted attack of the Immortal is starting to wear down Elijah Silver. He goes for yet another pinfall attempt here. Hooks the leg, but Silver gets both shoulders up for the near fall. And at this point, the possibility of making it to the finals for the third time in his tenure in this trials tournament is questionable for the man who calls himself the king of power. He is getting beaten from pillar to post here. Rahim Abbas is in complete control right now. And Abbas connects with another knee slam. This crowd has been partisan for the most part, but right now, they are completely behind the Immortal as he looks to pull off what would most certainly in most people's eyes be an upset. But he just got cut off and bowled over by those soup bone fists of Elijah Silver, who suddenly has gained a second win and takes Abbas down with not one, but two scintillating combinations. And then just drilled Abbas head first into the mat with a DDT. Just when it looked like Abbas was picking up steam, he just got derailed. And now Silver drives the point of his elbow right into the medulla oblongata of Raheem Abbas. And he is down and out. Now it looks like Abbas is the one who's in trouble here. Up and into a front headlock. Now Silver dragging Abbas into the corner. And he's got some bad intentions here. Now picking the Immortal up, hoisting him onto the top turnbuckle. He's got his arm over the shoulder, and oh my goodness. Another DDT. This time a draping variety from the top. That could compress your spine and cause a concussion simultaneously. Very dangerous impact. And speaking of dangerous impact, Silver with Abyss in the corner again. And now just raking the face of Abbas against that top rope. That's almost like burlap right there. It's a very rough, unforgiving surface that if you're not careful, can actually cut through flesh. Follows up with three 
short range clotheslines, just driving his bicep right into the chest of the immortal. And now drives his fist right into the face of the immortal. A slow, methodical pace being taken here right now by Elijah Silver. I don't know if he's taking his time to pace himself or if he's just enjoying the fact that right now he is beating another man senseless. Not gonna lie, partner, it's probably a little bit of both. He's been taking it to Abbas these past couple of minutes, but Abbas has taken a lot out of him too. This is gonna come down to who pulls off the right move at the right time. And this could be a hit right here. Another high angle power bomb administered by the king of power, Elijah Silver. And right now, he is detecting possibly the beginning of the end of this match. Silver applies a triangle hold to Raheem Abbas. And it is locked in tight, ladies and gentlemen. I remind you again that this is a no rules valet Tudo style tournament. So we're not using professional wrestling style rules here. There is no way to break this hold for Raheem Abbas except to find a way out. The referee can only declare a submission. And Abbas has no intention to submit, it looks like. I think he'd rather pass out than tap out. The referee may have to step in and make the decision himself here. Break the hold, Silver. I'm stopping the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by submission, Elijah Silver. I think the referee made the right call right there. Silver had no intention of breaking the hold, and Abbas had no intention of submitting to it. Well, with that ref stoppage, Silver becomes the first of Group D to advance to the round of 16. And one step closer to the throne that has eluded him for so very long. And now he awaits the winner of our next contest. Striker, it's good I found you before you went out for a match. What's up, my Russian brother? Wanna come out and spectate? <laughs> I have been doing different kind of spectate. This place, this tournament, more than meets the eye it seems. I have fear that you are being monitored. Monitored? Like some kind of big brother shit? More than that. We knew what we were getting into, but we all decided to take part in this. But I am starting to think that this throne of fear that suits our ethical is not just an executive title, but this monarch. Their reach expands far and wide, to places we could not have imagined. And what do you mean by that? Elijah Sim, he is a powerful man, not just fighting skill, but power of influence, like Pekan. Whoever wins this match, you're in and face it in the round of 16. You will not accept defeat. So I am here to watch your back in case he tries something. Aha! I get what you're talking about. He's on some gangster shit. Well, none of that actually makes a difference if I don't win. So first things first. But good looking out. Ladies and gentlemen, the second match in Group D of the Trial of Kings tournament is about to begin. Please welcome our next two competitors. Introducing first, fighting out of Havana, Cuba. This man is a wrestler, 
standing 6 feet 10 inches tall and weighing in at 280 pounds, representing Big Dummy, presenting the Dark Horse, Rodrigo Santos. And his opponent, fighting out of New York, New York, USA. This man is also a wrestler, standing 6 feet 6 inches tall, and weighing in at 255 pounds. Representing Gara Securities, presenting the Knockout King, Sydney Striker. I must admit I was a bit surprised when I saw that Sydney Stryker was on the grid for this tournament. But then I did my research and found that this is a case of the apple not falling too far from the tree as he has had some experience in the underground street fighting circuits of New York City. And even though both of these men are listed as wrestlers at the start of this match. This contest has all the charm, it would seem, of a backroom bar fight. And have a look at Santos here. Oh, he just slapped him right in the back of the head. There's another guy who's built like a brick house. But we gotta get used to that by now here, huh? Santos eating a DDT and wow. Sydney Stryker getting a measure of payback with a paintbrush right across Santos' cheek. Now an Irish whip, ducks under, leapfrogs, and 
Went for the spinning back elbow, but look at Santos just eat it. He absorbed that like it was nothing. And now he retaliates with a short arm lariat. Taking Stryker down to the mat now. Look at Santos just driving those fists into the face of the knockout king before driving said face right into the mat. And it doesn't look like Santos is quite done with Stryker's head against hard surfaces. Snake eyes and an elbow drop, and now Santos acknowledging the crowd. The big man from Havana, Cuba, has already shown that he can absorb some punishment, and now he's going to look to administer some here. Answers back with a DDT of his own and goes for the cover. No hooking of the leg, though. And Stryker gets the shoulders up. Santos is obviously not a professional wrestler. Otherwise, he would have instinctively attempted to hook the leg with that pinfall. And here's Stryker sticking to his namesake with a series of strikes. Slow to get up, and now Stryker with some words aimed towards Santos. A lot of trash talking going on. But if anybody can back up his words, it is the Knockout King who delivers a souvenir to Santos and Oak Belay. Professionally done, but no pinfall. Two count only. Striker on the follow here. A couple of seconds ago, it looked like he was trying to punch a brick wall, but it looks like he, uh, he penetrated it a little bit. And now he's asserting himself. A beautiful throw right there. Elbow to the gut by Santos, and look at this. Wow, that's a lot of power. The Dark Horse seemingly absorbing damage just to deliver his own. Only getting a two count for his troubles. But Rodrigo Santos appears to be confident that whatever damage Stryker can dish out, he can double. And he might be right on that because that brain buster definitely has had some ill effects on the knockout king. He is laid out in the middle of the ring and now Santos is just toying with him. Look at him, just tapping the jaw of Stryker with the heel of those boots like a Black Widow playing with his prey well it would be her prey because Black Widow's a female but you get the idea stiff right hands in the corner there by Santos this is not a rope a Stryker is taking the full brunt by everything that this guy is delivering and Santos just delivered a knee to the face. Continued damage to the head, neck, and shoulders of Sidney Stryker. Santos is an unhinged vagabond bordering on psychotic. In one moment, he's a charming smooth talker. In the next, a bloodthirsty lunatic craving violence. He has been on the radar of many within the underground for some time now, as despite his unstable nature, he's a powerful fighter and an effective fixer of the messiest of problems. Truly one of the most dangerous men in the world. The situation does not bode well for Sidney Stryker if his aim is to advance into the round of 16. Right now, Santos is just overpowering him in every sense of the word. Rolls him over for another cover. And again, only a two count. Now, the Dark Horse seems to be a bit amazed at the fact that his opponent still has the wherewithal to kick out even though he has been taking a prodigious beating. Oh. 
Hold the phone one second. Maybe Santos kicked the hornet's nest one time too many. And now Stryker just kicked him. And oh, wow. Yeah, this kid's got some hops too, doesn't he? Sidney Stryker showing off the athleticism that has made him one of the hottest prospects in View Japan Pro Wrestling. And then follows up by showing off his uh, striking prowess as taught to him by some of the greats in Pure Wrestling. And for the second time, he connects on a souvenir. That elbow shot right to the back of the neck following an electric chair. And Stryker's not done. Leapfrogging to the top turnbuckle. High risk coming up. And here he goes. A coup de grace, if you will. Well, uh, not quite, but we'll take it. Himself a former street fighter, Stryker broke into the pro wrestling business by traveling to Tokyo and training at the legendary Togo Dojo breeding ground for View Japan Pro Wrestling's future prospects. He's one of founder Yoshi Togo's top pupils. Even with the extensive knowledge of his training and many excursions to promotions around the world, he keeps true to his underground roots with an aggressive style and a bravado that comes from surviving on the streets. That was a big move right there. And Stryker goes for the cover. Hooking the leg, but only a two. The knockout king in disbelief, but has to get right back on the attack. That's what this is all about, folks. And he goes to the skies again, but this time crashes and burns. Well scouted by Santos, who once again showing off. That tremendous upper body strength of his. He's just been tossing and slamming and throwing Striker all over the ring. Somebody needs to check this guy to see if he's not on gear or something. The dark horse Rodrigo Santos setting Striker up for another fall away slam. And yeah, I don't think they have a uh, wellness policy in place for this tournament, if you know what I mean. Oh gosh. Santos hoisting Striker up in the air for a crucifix powerbomb. A razor's edge, if you will. Now he hooks the leg. All the weight bearing down on Striker, who still manages to get the shoulder up before the count of three. Santos not too happy with the cadence of that pinfall count. But right back on the attack now, dragging Stryker across the ring and to the outside. Oh, right hand. Down goes Stryker again. Yeah, we've seen enough in this tournament. Well, every part of the ring is dangerous. But outside of the ring is particularly dangerous. Nothing but hard surfaces and sharp edges outside of the squared circle. And we've seen that human flesh does not fight well against either. And now things just might be going from bad to worse for Sidney Stryker. As Rodrigo Santos just tore that timekeeper's desk apart and will be looking to utilize it to his advantage. Striker against the table, but no with a counter knee to the breadbasket. Quickly on the offensive here, and oh goodness. Sidney Striker just had in mind the same thing that Santos just had in mind, only he's gonna beat him to the punch. From the top turnbuckle, an almost 16 to 17 foot drop 
driving the point of his elbow into the cold heart of the dark horse through the timekeeper's table. And just like that, Sidney Stryker has gotten a second wind and now fights right back into this contest. Leaping from the apron with a clothesline on a still groggy and incapacitated Santos. The momentum has clearly just shifted back into the favor of the knockout can. I said it once, I'll say it again. In a New York minute, he's right back in it. And now he goes for a cover here. Only a two count though. And strikers in disbelief. True enough, you cannot count any of these combatants out until the referee calls for the final bell, which is why it would be in a competitor's best interest to push the pace until either you or your opponent can go no more. And just like that, with a big boot, Santos back in this match. And practically pancakes Striker face first into the mat as a follow up. Once again, Santos ever confident as he goes for another cover, hooking the leg, but again, Striker gets that right shoulder up at two. And how close was he from tasting defeat here in Group D? Santos taking a moment to try to figure out what it is that he has to do to put the knockout king out for good. How about another crucifix powerbomb? No! This time scouted by Stryker. And he lifts him over his back, but Santos right back up to his feet. Showing no intimidation, but he's a right hand. Retaliates with one of his own. Missed the second one, but the third one connects. And a series of clotheslines takes the winds out of Stryker's sails. This guy Santos reminds me of uh, Akio Sawamura from Group Bay. And how he was able to just absorb damage and get right back up like he was a horror movie monster. Stryker's ally, Vasily Rasputin, was somehow able to weather that storm and come up victorious in Group A. We will see if Sidney Stryker is able to follow in his footsteps. So far, it's looking pretty good because for the second time, he's able to slip out of a crucifix power bomb at this time. Bouncing off of the ropes, he delivers a Superman punch right on the button. And that is a follow-up for this signature move of Strikers he calls the Dragon Whip. And it connects big time. These fans are their feet now. We're anticipating a second Dragon Whip by Sidney Stryker. He connects again. They can probably hear the cheers of this crowd all the way up in Germany. Sidney Stryker feeling the electricity and delivers the exploder center of the ring into a cover and picks up the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by three count four, the knockout king, Sidney Stryker. You want to talk about stealing victory from the jaws of defeat? That's exactly what this kid did here tonight. He stood tall against the power, withstood the punishment, and came away victorious. 
and as a result, Stryker now faces Elijah Silver in the round of 16. And let me tell you, that is a match that I am really looking forward to seeing. We are halfway through Group D, ladies and gentlemen. Match number three after the intermission. Привет, друзья. I have been expecting you. You fucking with the wrong dudes, Rushki. Hey, yo, my dude. Hold this. Vasily, on the real, what kind of John claude Van Damme shit is going on here? Keep your eyes peeled, my friend. I am feeling this will get worse before it gets better. The Execution. Legendary Pit Fighter. Why don't you take the night off? You really think that's going to happen? I wasn't actually asking. Done now. Shiva, make the call. Excalibur Corporation, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to the manager. Excuse me? The CEO of your company, who is currently watching the Trial of King's Tournament from a closed circuit frequency. Put me on the phone with him now. I don't know who the hell you think you are, but whatever it is that you have to say had better be very quick and very convincing. Well, I regret to inform you that your competitor, the Executioner, is unable to fulfill his duties for you tonight due to him unforeseen. However, to my knowledge, if a sponsor can find a new fight to represent you, even on the shortest of notices, they can still participate according to the rules of this tournament. How convenient that I just so happen to have a replacement fighter for you ready to go. His name is Ice Chief. Would you look at that? How is that possible? He's scheduled to compete in the next match against the King. You can't be in two matches in one night. Who says I would be? 
The Blood Rose Foundation has graciously allowed one of my associates to replace me in that match, just so I can assist you in your time of need. In exchange, you would become affiliates with the Blood Rose Foundation and share whatever bountiful gains you acquire through the tournament. The Blood Rose Foundation? Who the hell are they? We're little new in the game. You remember the Lockheed Corporation? Well, they had a little hostile takeover before the tournament. Emphasis on the hostile part. They are now us. And we are blood masters. The police of the underground. And we want the throne. And we'll devour everything in our past. To get it. That's right. Think about it long and hard. Lockton was one of the largest conglomerates in the circle. And they fell like a ton of bricks to us. Think you can do any better? Hell, your fight is laid out right now because of us. You have no other option. Besides, did you really think that this guy was going to potentially defeat the King of Fear? With what? Hopes and dreams? I've already boxed with God, and I can tell you right now, this dude right here doesn't have the stuff. That's where you idiots get this all wrong. There are no rules in this tournament for a reason. Because if you want to be the king of fear, then you have to be fearless. You gotta take risks, step on toes, and smash some skulls. That's how you beat right. He's a monster among men. The king of all monsters. And we think he's sat on that throne long enough. So what's it gonna be? Fight or forfeit? Match number three of Group D is set to begin shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next two competitors. Introducing first, fighting out of Tokyo, Japan. This man is a freestyle fighter standing six feet six inches tall and weighing in at 250 pounds. Representing Nova Incorporated, Presenting the logic of the blade, Boon Shichi Tetsu. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been informed that a substitute combatant will be taking part in this contest. The opponent, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, is a freestyle fighter, standing 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing in at 250 pounds. Representing the Excalibur Corporation, 
Presenting Merciless Bryce Schaefer. Um, this is kind of an unexpected turn of events here, as Bryce Schaefer, who, mind you, is scheduled, or was scheduled, in the final match of Group D against Riot, is now fighting in this match against Bushichi Tetsuo. So we gotta ask the question, if Schaefer is replacing the executioner here, then who is going to be replacing Bryce Schaefer in the next match? I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for right now, this match, much like the last match, seems to be starting off as the proverbial knockdown drag out street fight. This is exactly what people were expecting to see with the caliber of competition being featured here in Group D. As at the moment, Tetsuo has, uh, how you say, withstood the attempt at offense from Schaefer to start this match and is now administering his offense. Hey, you weren't kidding when you called this a street fight, partner. I mean, just look at these two. They are not what I would distinguish as uh, professional fighters, if you get my drift. No doubt about it, this tournament has gathered men of many different disciplines, distinctions, and backgrounds, some more questionable than others. But hey, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to call the action. And right now, Schaefer showing off some uh, striking prowess there after fighting his way back into this match. Beautiful combination 
We had a uh, discus punch, but look at Tetsuo just get right back up to his feet, and it would appear right back into the uh, the clutches of a man who they call Merciless. Obviously living up to his name there with a wicked knee right to the temple of his opponent. Schaefer again with another spinning discus punch using all of that centrifugal force to lay his opponent out in the center of the ring. Pure intensity on display here and just like that Tetsuo right back up to his feet with a short arm lariat kick to the small of the back of Schaefer and Tetsuo now bearing down on his opponent and now a little trash talk going on in the ring Schaefer did not like that one bit going to blows delivering some left hands and some rights and now an uppercut and now the man they call Marshallis marveling at his handiwork definitely no pleasantries being exchanged here between these two men as Schaefer now with Tetsuo up on his shoulders into into a gut check and follows up with a knee that lifts the logic of the blade clean off of his feet and flat onto his face. What velocity on that strike. Now a bit of a, some amateur wrestling technique here. We are seeing some uh, complete offense on display right now from Bryce Schaefer, the man who would have been facing the king of fear, Riot in the last match of this seating. Glancing blow on the spinning elbow there by Schaefer. And Tetsuo just absorbed it. And delivers a very familiar looking move as retaliation. Tetsuo is considered an elite fighter within the underground and has been fighting for several years. He's so powerful, he will often challenge multiple opponents at a time in double or nothing fights. His fighting style is a mix of raw street tactics and an art that has existed in his family for generations. He boasts that no man can defeat him with their own bare hands. That rolling axe kick is a powerful yet unconventional maneuver that we saw used to great effect earlier in this tournament by the man that they call the fighting god, Masato Kadanashi. Now we've seen techniques be used by multiple competitors, but one like that, I don't know how it is that Tetsuo could know that type of a move and be able to use it the way that he just did to basically incapacitate Schaefer here. Incapacitate is a good choice of words. Since Tetsuo hit that move, this guy's been out on his feet. I mean, that, that technique is similar to a 12-6 elbow. And there's a big reason why that strike has been banned in mixed martial arts. It's right to the top of the head, which is the, the thinnest point of contact on the human skull. We're not just talking concussions here. That could cause some severe brain damage if used the wrong way, which would be the right way in an actual... I hate to cut you off, partner, but wait a second. It looks like somebody is running down to the ring right now and and he's got a sledgehammer with oh, oh my god wait a second is that that what the hell that that's adrian aries xwa 
superstar Adrian Aries has just stormed the ring and nailed Bushichi Tetsuo with a sledgehammer. Well, look at Tetsuo. Looks like he's fighting back. If the scouting reports on this guy is right, then I wouldn't really call this a handicap situation. He is the master of double or nothing fights, but I have a strong feeling that this is not an every man for himself scenario. We have not seen Adrian Aries since XWA Madness, the very last XWA pay-per-view event where he challenged Riot seemingly for the very distinction that all of these men are fighting for in this tournament. And Tetsuo, yeah, he is really a powerful individual. Aries just now picking himself up. But both men now asserting themselves on the logic of the blade. Yeah, this is definitely a two-on-one premeditated attack. Definitely not like the uh, random ulterior motive of Kevin Lasseter, who we also saw interject into a trials match earlier on in Group B regarding Tyson Blackheart, who ironically enough was a former associate, it would seem, of a man who they call the God of War, who just dropped Tetsuo with a draping DDT. And oh God, we know what's coming next, or at least I do, that punt kick right to the skull of Tetsuo, and I don't care how strong of a fighter you are, that is going to take you out, and it looks like Schaefer is about to follow up with a kick of his own, oh gosh, two stiff shots right to the, to the head of Tetsuo, and this is academic from here. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by three count four, Merciless Bryce Schaefer. As painful as it is for me to say this, it's all legal. There are no rules. So the record books will say that Bryce Schaefer just advanced to the round of 16 despite very clearly not being in control of this contest. Looks like we throw the brackets right out of the window at this point. Okami no more to hitore de tatakao kodo, oro kade aru to wa omo wanakata. Okami, anata wa amari ni mo oku no shinyo o ataimasu. Karera wa nezumi desu. Shifa wa. ここにも彼が助けをもたらした。さもなければ彼は今夜はそのレッスンの放棄をでした。忘れられますよ、老人。私は二度とあなたの生徒には似ありません。真の武器のように私は戦いの日の中で誕生されます。時々あなたは勝ちます。時々あなたは負けます。しかし私はいつも立ち上がって再び戦います。次のラウンド、
Marlena, whatever your name is, you are one heavy bitch. Ugh. Robbins, I heard about what happened. How is she doing? She's knocked out. Some redhead with a southern accent attacked her. Her name's Bloody Mary. She's a judge. Monarch's elite enforcer squad. Well, she said that she was working on behalf of someone else. Someone who wants Carmella to win. Isabella Frost. The Ivory Queen. She's wanted to take Carmella's spot as Red Queen for years. Guess she figured that would be impossible if Marlena were to win the trial by combat. So she sent Mary to soften her up. Still using people like chess pieces. Some things never change. Right. Is it true? Is this really your... daughter? You'd better get back to Carmella. Family talk. Okay, King. Good luck to you. You... You... This is all your fault! Your fault! I know. I'm sorry. That'll never be enough to change anything, but it's all I've got. Why? Why did you leave us? Why did you leave me? I was only eight years old, you bastard. Eight years old! I didn't want you to be in danger. I didn't want you to become a part of this life. This world I live in. You deserved better, and I was sure your mother could find better. You were wrong. She married another man, and he wasn't better. He tried to control us. He hit her. When I saw that, I couldn't control myself. She never hurt anyone in her life, and when I saw blood on her face, I snapped. After that, they locked me away in the juvenile center. She was brainwashed. He convinced her that I was a savage. They never visited. They never called. They abandoned me. I was alone. My childhood was loneliness, anger, violence. They were never able to contain me either. I was thrown out into the streets, left to die. The very thing you wanted to save us from is exactly what happened. I was 16 when I found out that son of a bitch killed my mother. They ruled it an accident, but what I did to him was no accident. They've still never found him and never will. I wondered why I was so good at being violent. And then that's when I learned who you were. The second king of fear. You deserted us for money and power. I've done bad things. The same kind of things you've done. Contracts. Cleanup jobs. And then I even joined Tyson Blackheart's organization after he learned of his family lineage, just so I could get that much closer to the throne. I was going to destroy you, even worse than I destroyed that man, by making you watch me tear apart the one thing in this world that you love the most. More than your own flesh and blood. That's not true. I did what I did because I love the both of you. What I do creates enemies. Enemies that would do to me exactly what you said you would. Try to get to me through making the people I hold dear suffer. Did you ever think that maybe we could stand and fight for ourselves? 
Like you said, your mother was no fighter. I thought you were going to follow her path. Little did I know that apparently you took after me instead. There's a lot that I've had to keep secret to a lot of people, Marlena. Not just you. I realize now how much of a mistake that was. All this time I thought I had to be the one to carry this burden alone. When in fact everyone I've ever met from the second I became the King of Fear, until now, has been carrying it as well. You the most of all. I told Carmella once that I wasn't worthy of being king. All this time I've been looking for someone who might be able to do it the way it should be done. The way her father did. Maybe I am the guy who's supposed to be here though. I was afraid of what having that much power meant for the people in my life. But if they're all standing with me, then maybe there's nothing to be afraid of. If we can't change the past... We can change the future. I hope I'm not intruding. Vincent, you are such a fool. How could any one person carry such sorrow with them for so long? It's a miracle it hasn't destroyed you. I'm not ashamed to say this in front of your daughter. I love you. I have for a long time. I know you feel the same way, but we can never act on it because of our duties. But just as you said, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. We can do this together. All of us. Marlena, I was prepared to go to war against you here. Even with the concussion that you inflicted on me. But I know the reason for your anger. I understand why you felt the way that you do. I am not your enemy. I want to help you reclaim your humanity. The same way I've helped your father keep his. If there is a monster in you, then I know who it should be hunting. Frost. She would destroy my family's legacy and your family's existence just to become the Red Queen. I say, let's give her the opportunity she so desperately wants. I have a plan, and I very much would like... No need you to be a part of it, Marlena. We are not blood, but we still can be family. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself now. I came here looking to tear everything apart, and now I don't see what that would have done. If I had taken over your company, what would I have done? I'm not a thinker, I'm a fighter. And now I have nothing to fight for anymore. You feel like you don't have any purpose anymore. That's where you're wrong. Come on, Munchkin. I'll show you everything that you didn't know you needed to know. Join us, and let's do what we do best. M Munchkin? That was... My nickname, you called me when I was a little girl. You still are, Marlena. I'm sorry I put you through hell. But the roads we walked have led us here, and now we can keep walking down that road together, if you want to. I... I do. Come, Marlena. The king has to prepare for his match. And so do we. The card has just subjectively changed without notice. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The final match of Group D. Please welcome our next competitor. Introducing first, a substitute competitor. Fighting out of Glasgow, Scotland, 
This man is a freestyle fighter standing 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing it at 247 pounds. Representing Locked In, presenting the Black Saint, Malcolm Morrissey. His opponent, fighting out of New York, New York, USA. This man is a wrestler standing 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing in at 265 pounds. Representing Monarch, please welcome the King of Fear, Ryan. So apparently, 
This is how we will be closing things out in Group D with this Malcolm Morrissey being the replacement combatant for Bryce Schaefer, who we saw win the previous match. Morrissey apparently has things well scouted when it comes to the king because he immediately reaches under the ring for a steel chair and wait, wait a minute what the hell is he doing he just dropped the chair on the ground so he's apparently trying to challenge riot for the right to use that weapon well i don't know if this guy's got more guts than brains he certainly looks like he can take punishment but we're talking a whole other level of the word when you speak of the man they call the king of fear. Riot is the guy that won the last tournament. And if that tournament was anything like this one, I would definitely not take this man lightly. The king goes for a shot with the chair, but Morrissey with a counter and delivers a beautifully executed reverse vertical suplex. That's a lot of impact, but wait, oh my goodness, Riot just bounced right back up to his feet like he felt absolutely nothing. And answers with three lariats, and now asserts himself with a steel chair. The weapon of choice that has carried him throughout his illustrious career in professional wrestling. But the Black Saint, back to his feet, tries to go for a right hand, but is quickly sent back to the canvas by the counterattack of Riot. Chopped to the throat. Right hand backing the man up into the corner. And now, the King holding court. Three stiff shots. And Malcolm Morrissey is in a bad way here. Drive-by kick. Right to the temple. And now Riot reaching under the ring for a weapon of his own. And he chooses a table. These guys wasting absolutely no time busting out the hardware. And the situation, it seems, is about to go from bad to worse for Malcolm Morrissey as he takes a chair shot right to the spine. Riot is surgical when it comes to the use of weapons in combat in professional wrestling and otherwise so it would seem and now he sets up the wood and is preparing malcolm morrissey for a short trip and a hard fall but first a difference maker signature technique of riot and now just Basically staring a hole in the groggy carcass of Malcolm Morrissey before he hooks him up and throws him over. Vertical suplex right through the table. And this match might be over before it even started really. Riot setting up and burying Malcolm Morrissey six feet under. And this one is over. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by three count four, the King of Fear, Riot. A uh, partner. I was not expecting for that match to go that fast. That was a one-sided beatdown right there. 
Finish him. Finish him. Finish him. I demand tribute. What the hell is this? Why is this happening to you? Why now? Change is weak. Unworthy to call you. Make me pay for his fault with blood. I have felt this since, since the last two. You are perfect. So strong. So strong to have desisted. All of this time. Whatever this is, whoever you are, get the hell out of my head. My pal grows by the day. There will come the time soon where you will take your rightful place as the general of my army. An arm that shall burn. This is tired. This is I've got no idea what's gotten into him. He seems to have come back to his senses here, but wait a second. From behind, Adrian Ares makes another appearance with that signature sledgehammer. And he drives it into the spine of Riot. This is the first time that these two men's paths have crossed since XWA Madness and right behind him is Bryce Schaefer, the man who we now know will be facing Riot in the round of 16. And it looks like these two are trying to soften their opponent up before that match ever happens. Maybe that was the plan all along. Maybe Malcolm Morrissey was just a sacrificial lamb to lure right into a false sense of security. Well, we were wondering why this substitution took place. It appears to probably have been orchestrated by Ares all along. But Riot now, fighting back and oh! A knee lift that lifts Ares right out of the ring and Riot going to the top turnbuckle looking to follow up. Safer cuts him off though. Back superplex. And the King goes down hard. Stiff combination by Safer here. This is a preview of what we will see in a round of 16. Riot again, however, fights back. Hard, big boot, sending Schaefer out of the ring. And the King has came to, and that will spell doom for the man who calls himself merciless. He's gonna try to bury him six feet. Whoa, hold the phone, whoa. Look at the size of that guy. He's almost as big as Gunner. And he just hurled the king through the air like a paperweight. They're not done here. Oh God. What are they planning on doing to Riot? Looks like they're setting up for a triple power bomb. Oh no, don't. Oh. Bryce Schaefer and company have just sent a clear message to the King going into the round of 16. Medics are out here trying to tend to the King, but it appears like he is refusing assistance and is crawling his way backstage. What shape is he going to be in going into the next round? It's like the goddamn Wild West out here. Who'd have saw this coming? 
You sure as hell didn't. Good thing I was in the neighborhood. Solomon. Is that you? In the flesh. You look like you have a problem, King. Fortunately, I've become really good at solving it. 